the big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stand. Um, wow. <laughs> wait, so will Bump and Mike's come back? Um, we're going to do a tour this summer, May and June, July. Oh, you are? Oh. Yeah, we'll be at the Borgata, we'll be at the uh, Sands in Bethlehem, and then we're uh-huh. picking up some more dates as soon as I can get Dave to agree. Oh, is that That's the work of it, right? Oh, it's so hard. He's got, you know, tour dates himself all the time. He doesn't want to split the money. He doesn't want to go to Florida. Like, there's a lot of rules. <laughs> he doesn't go anywhere where he has family. Really? Oh, yeah. Smart. He won't. He wants won't. to avoid it? He wants to go to casinos in the Midwest and South and North Pacific where he doesn't know anybody, where they let him smoke in the elevators. <laughs> it's hilarious. I love it. He's still ripping through cigarettes, right? Yeah. I love Dave, but it's oh, like see. taking your Nana on the road. <laughs> you know, he's, he's cranky. Dude, what was that line? Uh, so funny. It's, I think it's in the first episode. I can say it, right? So Please. Uh, you're like... You look like somebody who knows how to delete a hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> Dave looks like he knows how to delete a hard drive in a hurry, I think I said. <laughs> it's a challenge coming up with insults for David Tell because he wears the same thing every single show. Yeah. Whereas I mix it up and give him some something to work with. Yeah. I'll wear right. a different hat, a different shirt, different shoes, a coat. I saw him at a show That's like a, a month point. ago. Duh. I saw him backstage and he was wearing the same thing. And I was like, how's the manifesto coming along? <laughs> It's good. It's good. That's great. Yeah. He's a good guy. He got a good heart. Yeah. He raises my game. I love I love working with him. Oh, um, it's got to happen for the two of you. I, can't, I mean, the two of you working together. It's, it's I amazing. mean, I, I tell Dave all the time, one plus one is three. You know, we're, we're great on our own. He's the best on his own. But when we come together, it pops to another thing, like, awesome. like a band. Yeah. It's like I when Joe a, Walsh joined the Eagles. I would buy a ticket to, to go see the show. Me Thank too. You. Yeah. Oh, that's I got to keep an eye out for you coming. I want to see you two doing it I live. hope you guys do another it's LA so show. It's so amazing. We probably should have toured right when the thing came out. We didn't. We both just stopped. We needed a break from each other, I think. Yeah, but you know what? The way the Netflix specials work, the biggest bump comes like nine months after. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, it, it builds it's and time. it builds and it builds. And like there's people this week who are discovering... That's but never heard of it. Seeing it right now, really, on top of all the people that saw it before. You don't think it dies down? No, no. When you announce these tickets, they'll go way faster than they did last time. Really, for sure. Well, that's nice to hear. Yeah, no, that'll be good. Yeah, you'll you'll do some added shows in markets you weren't expecting. It is definitely going to be different. Huh? Yeah. Even in the casino markets, you think? Because those are really he won't really do the theaters. He likes the casinos. Yeah. Is that right? What's, yeah. what's the deal? Why the casino? They pay better. He can smoke. Oh, and, yeah, and here's the other thing: sense, you'll yeah. get a raise. Or grittier. You'll get yeah. a raise in all of those. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. So whatever you did last time, it's going to go up for sure. For I love sure. it, and I've been I've been using this time away from him to work on material, so that when we join back up in May and June and stuff. Like I can bring some firepower too because he's on the road constantly. Yeah. So I've just been popping up at the comedy store, the improv, and I'm in Bray in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Like just to work on material because trying to keep up with Dave. Dave's the best comic there is right now. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. the fact that he lets me do these shows with him like blows my mind. So the last thing I want to do is just ask him questions and be his fall guy. Like I want to bring it too and have some good material. And, you know, he gets squeamish if I talk about a political joke or, you know, but it yeah. forces him to then like retort with another political joke. So it's yeah. in a way we have, we challenge each other in a really interesting way. Oh, you guys are just so good. You have such it's, good chemistry. It's good chemistry. It's Thanks. very complimentary. And it looks like you guys are just, you know, it's a beautiful tennis thing to watch back and forth. I have a Thanks. technical question, I of guess. Of course. I love your technical questions. Yeah, They're fun. Yeah, it's interesting how you guys, so I know. If only you could use this stuff in your act, it would work out <laughs> great. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> See, that's, when, that's, that's roasting by listening. Yeah, you did it. See? You did it. Um, <laughs> hold on one second. Okay, so you, you only have one show to tape, right? You can't obviously have the same audience for two because you were doing it in clubs the bumping yeah. mics we did we did three nights at the comedy village underground at the comedy cellar we did two yeah. shows a night different obviously different audience, different audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mostly different we get a lot of repeats as you can imagine because there's so much improvising improvising that they want us they want to see more they yeah. just don't want to leave yeah you know paul rudd is in the sunday episode of yeah, bumping right. mics yes. on netflix the only reason he closes the second show with us 
is because he was there with his wife and friends for the first show, loved it so much, called the babysitter and was like, we're staying out and stayed for a whole other show. And by then I was like, all right, this guy's had a bunch of drinks. He's here for two shows. I'm not even going to ask him. We're just bringing him up. Yeah. And he flew right out of his seat and and played with us for 10 minutes. So it is a night out. Like we produce it by not really completely producing it. We kind of put a few things out there like, like Bruce Willis said, hey, I want to come see your show. I said, great, you know, take care of you and your friends, put him on the guest list. I don't see him before. I don't tell him I'm going to introduce him. I wouldn't have introduced him, but Dave was like, all right, I'll take it. I'll, you know, and he just like shouted him out. So I said to myself that afternoon, Bruce Willis is coming. We're shooting. It's our first night. What if something does happen where he leaps out of his chair or something does happen? I want to be prepared I don't really want to write any jokes about him, but maybe if I had a harmonic in my back pocket, just in case <laughs> something cool will happen. And that's as much as I'll take the producing of it. Like yeah. kind of what ifs and maybes and prepare for different things. And literally Dave and I don't speak before the show. He won't make a set list. He won't block. He won't rehearse. There's no makeup. He, he is off the street, you know, has a cigarette. He'll say hi and we go. And if I want to like, hey, Dave, will you set me up for this, this, and this? No. no, no. Really? Oh, no. It's infuriating. And sometimes. Wow. And sometimes um, I'll set him up for a joke that he's done three nights in a row and knocked it out of the park. And then he'll, he'll, he'll just ignore me. And that's infuriating. Oh, yeah. And that's so, by the way, wow. it's definitely so him. Yeah, it's repeating himself. Because I, 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 I've told this story before. Like, cause I. I worked with him years ago. I opened for him, like I middled for him huh. a few times. Oh, wow. And I was like, so, you know, so geeked. This is like insomnia is on, you know, right. like just it's everywhere. And every comic coming up, you're like, oh, my God, I love this guy. Right. He's, and, you know, all the shows are packed. He is fucking destroying. Yeah. And Remember like, where it was? Brea. Brea. Yeah. I did. I did two years apart two separate weekends with him like six show weekends and like you know so you do your thursday show and you're like holy shit then friday early show you know let's say most of that stuff and then on the late show it's the same setup and a different punchline Mm. you're like what the fuck that's what i mean like and like the the punchline killed yeah and he's already like and then saturday it's not the first one that killed it's not the second one that did it's another punchline right in there and i'm like well, he finds one he likes, and yeah. then when he gets it the way he likes it, he never does it again. God damn He hates it. repeating himself. Yeah. He's not thinking about building material for a special. He's just thinking about staying true to what he thinks is funny all yeah. the time. All the time. Wow. So if we happen to be shooting that weekend, that's the jokes we get on tape. That's really, that's really how it is. Yeah. Oh, my God. And he has another even... half hour that he could have done. We'll also, like, argue about that. I'm like, Dave, we got to, like, kill, like got to bring your best stuff and and then i'll i'll set him up for a home run joke that's going to get us out of the episode and he'll just ignore me it's infuriating <laughs> and what about when you talk to him like afterwards about it he's like i didn't feel like doing it, it the, he, he won't even it's not even a, a proper question really uh, he'll, no he not, won't even entertain the he question he won't even know what i'm talking he's about he's like what yeah wow yeah I, if i see him afterwards i'm uh, it's about the next show i don't have time to look back he's not engaging on that this i've learned how hilarious. not to fight with him and i learned that it's not me it's him <laughs> and i've become really patient and to be honest with you as much as we've been friends our whole careers dave and i decades like i think this has made us like truly pals where we're we have a whole other respect for each other and I I haven't really thought about this or talked about it too much but you know we had big fights going into this thing like a couple years ago like a couple Christmases ago when we were starting to like when I was pushing him to go to the Montreal Comedy Festival and let's call it bumping mics and he didn't like that he didn't want to go to the festival there's no money he didn't want to call it bumping mics it was too on the nose he didn't want to and now we don't really fight we're sort of getting to a place where we kind of understand each other. You're like an old married couple. You yeah. You're Nana on the road. Yeah. 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 You know how Nana is. And I know how he is now <laughs> and I don't push him on certain things and he, and he'll admit this too. Like he, he will, um, 
he will defer to me on other things where he would fight back about it all the time. You know, and we're comics, we, and there's always little mood swings in here and there. Of but, course. But finally one day I was like, Dave, just talk to me as nicely as you do the servers at the comedy cellar. Because he'll tips everybody, bring some candy, and then he'll look at me and go, bah, 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 just bark at me about something. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I don't need to get into a to a messy marriage here, bro. You're like, yeah. we're going to get along or we're not doing it. You know? And I'm always fascinated when two funny guys get together who don't necessarily have to be together. Right. It's kind of fun. Like when rappers get together. I asked, um, there's a there's a musical thing called Black Star. Talib Kweli is a yeah. rapper with Most Def. And of course. They both have solo careers and they do both do extremely well, but they do this special thing together. Black Star, yeah. And I, I asked Talib Kweli, I go, how do you get along with Most Def? Like, how do you guys like, work it and he goes oh i just do what most says i've oh. learned that if i try to push back and 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 you know most most you know maybe i shouldn't be saying all this on the on the podcast but basically he said like he, he's learned to just sort of trust that the other guy is kind of right yeah and it's gonna work and yeah 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 <laughs> i thought you were saying yasin bay is a sovereign citizen so yeah that's right going with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite thing ever is that most f was in africa and he was like i'm first of all i'm yasin bay and then they were like you don't have a visa to be here and he was like i'm a sovereign citizen when they were like no that doesn't count right you gotta get the fuck out of here man yeah. they kicked him out but those dudes are amazing together yeah yeah i've seen them together so you're saying that i'm that guy yeah, I think what Jeff is saying, and you know, in a marriage, you realize there's just some fights that aren't worth having, and you you trust and you know them, and you know where your I know where your abilities lie, and I think you know where mine lie, and mm -hmm. there's just shit that you don't fight about because you're like that. I know I know that Tom knows in this situation, like you know what's up here. Yeah, you trust choices too. Yeah, you're like you no, a, you know, part you know. of it is doing it together. Now we have yeah. a, you know Dave and I we we got it we got through it like. He, he pushes me too. like he wasn't settling on a director and everybody I brought to him, he either wouldn't meet with or they were too hip or they, he would accuse them of over lighting someone else's special. You know, he would be very persnickety about it and I would get mad because he'd be being rude to people that, you know, are very respected and so on and he wouldn't take the meeting or he'd be an hour late or whatever, you know, that's Dave. And then, you know, I brought him, finally I was, L lamenting all this to my pal Andrew Jarecki who is a documentarian yeah and I knew I wanted this to have a documentary feel and Andrew and I kind of was like one in the morning we were just having one of our long walks we're good pals Andrew Jarecki directed uh the jinx on HBO unbelievable about Robert Durst it's unbelievable yeah it's a fantastic multi-part documentary so you know what Bumping Mike's is going to be a three-part documentary. Actually, Netflix wanted it to be more. They wanted it to be like four. And Let Dave, me guess, was, Dave. Dave was like a three. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll, I can make that work. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll make it a weekend um, format. We'll call the episodes by the night and we'll see if that works. And we'll do two shows a night and we'll intercut some of our sort of offstage stuff. And, and Andrew... Um, it, Andrew, to his credit, even though he'd seen Dave and I perform together many, many times more than anyone else, Andrew's not a comedy director. He'd never worked in comedy. And I'd been telling him for the whole 15 years I'd been friends with this guy, you should do comedy. It'll add years to your life. These documentaries you keep doing about child molesters and murderers <laughs> are, are a drain on to you and your family. What a fucking bummer. Yeah. yeah right. He did, uh, you know, the Capturing the Freedmans was oh his first big God. film about, about but, child, molest nah. kids, child molesters but, dude, in, in Long Island. The jinx Jesus I was obsessed Christ. with. It's, yeah. so, it's so good. And, and Andrew's a very sophisticated filmmaker, so I knew... If I set up the comedy and the situation and got the club together and, and got the act together, then Andrew would make it look good and he would also be able to like maybe help me with some of, you know, the friction between Dave and I. Yeah. And But we didn't want it to be like my friends directing it. So Andrew went down to the comedy cellar mm. without me and hung out with Dave. And they'd known each other a little bit through me over the years and suddenly this 
uh, this murder documentarian and Dave were getting along really well. And, and Dave has these little tests that I don't, I've never talked about this, but you know, like Amy Schumer, big star was about to go on, you know? And Dave said, Oh, I guess you want to go down and watch Amy. <laughs> and Andrew saw the trap. Yeah. He's like, no, I love Amy, but I'm here to hang with you, Dave. And that's when wow. Dave really, you could tell Dave really fell in love. Andrew told me this whole story after. You know, and uh, you guys were playing chess, man. That's what we really wanted to get Dave on board with Andrew because Dave had turned down three or four other comedy directors. Wow, big, big names who would do that, who wanted to do it. Guys winning Emmys for these things and stuff. Dave's like, no, 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 too hip, too, 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 yeah. Is part of the lesson (laughs) that you learned or what you figured out was like not to be reactive to him (laughs) reacting, you kind of had to like take a breath and just allow him to be how he is. Right. And, and, and sort of navigate. and not fault him for, I mean, that's yeah. just who he is. I have to love him for who he is. Yeah. And now he's starting to trust me. And there were certain other things in the show and guests he didn't want that I really did force on him. And he would immediately afterwards say, yep, yeah, you know, you were right. That was a good idea. So I realized he was sort of defrosting a little bit himself and you know, other things I pushed him on. He was adamant he didn't want to do and we didn't do it. Yeah. So there's a, you know, you, you pick your battle, so to speak. 